Thanks for joining us on another episode of The Grind. Here's your host, JB.
feel like you you're you're meant to do more than just that like that was just a small piece of what i was capable of doing and uh, you know i knew that i still had i still had um you know wanted to fight and i still had that that still athleticism and that that drive that competitive edge but um I was, you know, working in, in a, in a normal, you know, what you would consider like a normal job or career. So, um, I think, I think one day I bumped in, actually bumped into a guy that I grew up with from back in Martinsville and he, um, I had heard that he was fighting. So I was in like some store in, uh, in Radford, Virginia, and I bumped into him and, uh, you know, I, talk, I heard that he had been fighting and I talked to him about it. And I, I wanted to, at this point, I wanted to start fighting for one, because I, I always wanted to fight. And two, I needed to get back in shape because I was, you know, I gained, gained more weight than I should have and was just doing nothing. So I uh, bumped into him. He told me um, about a gym that I trained, I started training at Tech MMA and Fitness Academy. Uh, it was the first and only gym I trained at before I even moved here. So um, I, I went there, I loved it. Uh, I kind of had to convince my wife to let me do it. Cause you know, every time somebody, probably anytime somebody thinks about, um, fighting or anything like that, you know, you think about your loved one getting, getting punched in the face and all that stuff and nobody wants to see that happen. So, um, I convinced her, let me, let me start training there. And, uh, I had my first fight probably, it was probably no more than two months after I first started training, um, and I loved it. Like I, I, it was I won my first fight, and it was just like that feeling of of being able to compete again and winning in a combative setting, just like wrestling was like like I needed that that feeling again, and uh, I just never looked back. I kept training, and um, beginning of 2016 is actually when I. You know, I was still working while I was fighting, so I went through my amateur career. So over a year span,
Yeah, it definitely sounds like that it's been a, a journey for you, right? It's been kind of a, kind of an interesting track for you. What was your, uh, how did you get into the UFC? What was that track like? What got your attention? What, when did the UFC kind of notice you? Or how did you get noticed by the UFC to, to, to gain that contract from, from obviously the, you know, the wrestling and getting noticed and, and being able to get into a position where you could train again and, and work. But, but how, did, how was it that the UFC uh, became familiar with Tony? It's a lot different from... Um Oh, everyone's is different, just like life. Everybody's journey is different. But, um, you know, mine was a little bit longer than a lot of people's. I had about 20, I had over 20 professional fights, which um, nowadays it's, you know, people can be like 7-0, and 8-0 going into the UFC, which eight pro fights is, is, you're still, for me, when I think about when I had eight pro fights, I was still a baby, you know, like when you think about your progression as a fighter. But, um, you know, I, 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 I had I experimented with with a lot of I fought for a lot of promotions on the regional scene all up and down the um, the East Coast and um, uh, won a couple of titles and one of the biggest ones I won was it's called CES it's in the Northeast um, mainly out of Rhode Island and um, after winning their title um, w- which I know before winning the title every bantamweight everybody in my weight class that won that title got signed to the UFC so. Um, once, once getting with them and, and winning that title, they kind of, they really, they do a really good job of helping push fighters through to the UFC. So, um, what happened was I got onto what's called the contender series, um, which is kind of like, if you think about it, it's almost like, um, it's almost like a job interview, like a hands-on job interview. You, you fight, they, they match you up with another fighter that, um, you know, from the regional level that that they consider would be UFC caliber, and um, you guys fight, and usually the winner gets a contract, but it's not guaranteed that the winner gets a contract. If if the fight isn't that good, or you know you don't look like you are you know trying to get, trying to finish the opponent, and you're trying to just do enough to win, they're not looking for that. They they want people that are um, looking to finish, looking to be entertaining. And, you know, luckily I, I, I got the finish. I, I won by TKO in the third round and uh, I got signed. I got the contract that night. So what they do is they have all the fights. They have it's usually five fights. You have five fights. And as soon as the fight's over, they bring all the winners in the back and they like read the verdict. Dana White comes out, um, uh, has a piece of paper and he goes through each fight and either why he is or is not going to sign these fighters. So you're sitting back there in the chair and you know, he's, you see him on the screen and, and he, he's either saying, no, you're not going to get signed because of this, or we love you. We would, we want to sign you. So luckily I was on the other end where, you know, as we love you, we want to sign you. So it was, it was cool to hear all the nice things he had to say about me. And then, um, you know, I got, I got signed that night and it's been like, that's like a dream come true. You know, I always thought that I would just get signed to the UFC. Uh, A lot of fighters usually, you know, you can get signed last minute. If a fighter falls off, you can, um, they may call someone that's um, on the regional scene or someone that, you know, they know that they've heard of and uh fill in and i always thought that that would be the way that i would that i would get signed to ufc and that's always what i hope for but now i think about it it's a lot cooler to um get the experience to be on the contender series and have you know dana white himself handpick you to be uh signed to the ufc yeah for sure man that's a that's an interesting track especially when you're performing in front of him for that shot right that's got to be a totally different feeling than just in a regional uh, regional circuit uh, competing you know on a on a monthly or bi-monthly basis to, to get picked up like you said but to be there fighting in front of uh, dana white at the ufc for the shot at a contract uh, that had to be some pressure huh yeah, it's that's the thing. You see fighters, um, you know, some fighters 
they don't do well under pressure and you see guys that go out there and they they want so bad to get a finish that they kind of psych themselves out and put so much pressure on themselves but um i the weirdest the funniest thing is i never felt any pressure i felt i was the most calm i had ever been going into a fight um i, I knew that if i if i maintain the fighting style that i you know me the way i fight that you know, I, I was there for a reason. They they picked me for a reason because they like they like my fighting style. So I knew if I if I did everything that I always do, that um, you know that that I would be fine. And I prepared to the best of my ability. I was in great shape. Um, I was I I had a, a friend from my old gym in Virginia. He told me, and I, I'll never forget this. You should only feel pressure when you're asked to do something that you're not prepared to do, and. Mm. Uh, so I, I prepared, I did everything. I, I knew that I was, I've done all I could do. And and, it, and I knew that it was, I was ready and that there was no no reason, no way I was going to leave that night without the contract. And um, I was determined I got the job done. Nice. Sava chimes in, most exciting fight. I witnessed it live. Yeah, so yeah Sava, Sava actually been. came and watched it. it. It was cool. Sava came. Um, it, I had about 15 people come to Vegas to watch and it's, they gave you like four tickets, I think. And I just kept asking for more and asking for more. And fortunately I, I had a lot of people come, but it was good to see Sava. That was the first time I had seen Sava since, since college. So it, he was there and it, that was, it was great getting to see him again. Nice. So you go to the contender series, uh, you come out of there with a contract. You're now a UFC contract fighter from that point forward. Kind of what happens in that. Um, I know there's teams out there that you guys can get on to. So talk a little bit about that, but what happens once that contract's in your hand, Do they say, Hey, this date, this time you're fighting, be prepared type situation, or is it still pretty fluid? Obviously, after last year, a lot of things are fluid as they get cranked back up again. But uh, your first couple of months in, as a UFC fighter, what was that like? So it's kind of <clears throat> the way like a, like a UFC contract works. It's kind of like, um, I mean, it's, it's similar to any other fight. Just the fact that, you know, it's, it's every, well, every, every current fight is your biggest fight. But, you know, you, some people can feel the pressure of being in the UFC and needing to perform and but as far as the contracts go, you know, you always want to be ready because you never know when you'll have an opportunity because you could always, um, even though you're assigned you know, to the UFC, you could always fill in last minute for someone that, that you know, got injured or something like that. So you always want to be prepared. So if you already don't have a fight schedule, um, it's good to be prepared just in case. But, um, you know, as a contract, it – UFC fighter, it, it feels really good. You know, you, you get, I remember, well, still, I still feel this way. It's still surreal to me, the whole thing, but, um, just, just the, the feeling of knowing that like, um, you know, I, I, I set this goal as, as a child and, you know, things happen in life where you forget about these goals or you, you know, life hits you and you, you think it's too big and you start kind of putting it to the side and you just forget about it. And then, you know, you, it circles back to, and it's crazy how everything that I've done in my life from, from <clears throat> Taekwondo when I was little to wrestling to everything kind of led me to this back to this, this goal that I had. So, you know, I'm still, it's still surreal to me that, you know, I, that people, you know, oh, you're in the UFC, you know, and I, it's still weird seeing myself on TV, even though I fought on TV a bunch of times, but you know, to be a part of the promotion and, and all that, it's it's still crazy for me to to even comprehend. Yeah, and you're you're obviously watching you. You can tell that you're very comfortable on the mat. Uh, if there's if there's a point and there's an opportunity for Tony to take down his opponent, <laughs> I can tell you right now, he's taking a shot, <laughs> and uh, maybe more than one. Um, the, not the last fight. The last fight was pretty good, but the one before that. Uh, you had a pretty high number of takedowns, if I recall, in that one. And that really, to be honest with you, I think that that is when um, I think that a lot of people that followed the UFC uh, was kind of an eye-opener to what your capability is on the mat. Even some of the commentators were, were commenting on what your ability was on the mat. 
Um, and it didn't obviously carry through to this last fight, but uh, kind of speak how wrestling may have prepared you to be that comfortable um, on in the octagon on the mat. Because obviously, you know, there's every fighting style that's available is in there is, you know, from the grapplers on the ground and the submission specialist to the knockout specialist. Uh, but you're, you know, especially after this last fight, you you found your comfort level at both of them, it seems. Uh, but you, but you're definitely comfortable on the mat. Yeah, I think I think wrestling. I'm a little biased, but you know, I think wrestling is is the the absolute best. Um, I consider wrestling a martial art. You know, the best martial art you can have is wrestling. Not only because um, if you're a good wrestler, you can dictate where the fight takes place, um, whether it's on the feet or on the ground. You know, it's it's up to you. So at any moment, you can kind of change the trajectory of the fight with one takedown. Um, somebody's a really good striker and they can't keep you from taking that da- taking them down then their striking doesn't really do you any well any good so um and also same thing with jujitsu good wrestling posture which jujitsu is grappling but wrestling's a little different good wrestling posture keeps you out of a lot of uh jujitsu situations where you might get caught in submissions too so um and on top of all that wrestling helps keep you like it helps you prepare for any adversity um the toughest situations i've been in physically um were were from wrestling practices and uh everything that i went through throughout my whole life especially through college and after college um um when i got to wrestle in virginia tech's wrestling room um it's it's just different wrestling practice is is hard it's grueling and uh it's the best thing that can that can prepare you for anything in life uh, especially fighting, you know, it's, and, uh, you know, I don't, I'm not sure if I would be, I don't think I would be as successful as I am in fighting if I wasn't a wrestler and I didn't wrestle throughout my whole life. So, um, you know, wrestling's given me pretty much everything. I, I don't know where I, wrestling pretty much saved my life. I don't know where I would be if I didn't wrestle. I probably wouldn't have went to college, um, wouldn't have, um, uh, wasn't until I started wrestling that I even, um, was competitive and wanted to make good grades. I wanted to be better at everything just because of wrestling. So if it wasn't for that, you know, I, I definitely wouldn't be in the UFC and I don't even know where I would be in life right now, you know? Yeah, for sure, man. It definitely, you can definitely tell that you're, that you're comfortable in, in now every position. So let's, uh, let's talk a little bit about this last, uh, last fight you had with Anthony Burchek, I believe is, is how he pronounces his last name there. April 17th, uh, just a little over a week ago, um, right before uh, the big crowds returned to the UFC, uh, you had a, uh, had a, had a, Big fight. It was the first fight of the night in the UFC fight night on Saturday night on ESPN. Um, Like I said, you picked up a name. I believe it was a fight before one of the commentators called you take down Tony or something like that. (laughs) Referred to you as that just because you were you were relentless, man. That guy, I don't think ever had a chance to stand up and and even square up to you. But uh, you obviously poured it on on this guy on Anthony. uh, But, you know, to me, even to me, I, I didn't watch a lot of your early fights yet. There's still not a lot of them out there. Um, but when I, seen you, when I seen you land that punch that put him to the mat, man, I, when I seen that, I'm like, man, Tony's got some striking in him. And if he continues on this track, he is going to be very, very scary in that weight division. So kind of talk us through a little bit about that fight and kind of what you were feeling. Obviously, I know you've got a new team. If I don't recall, if, if I'm not mistaken, you recently went to the American top team um, from a different team. And, and I think you spoke a little bit about that in one of the interviews I seen with you talked about that transition and how, how that training has helped you out and, and kind of put you in that position, but kind of talk to that, uh, that last fight with, uh, with Anthony there that ended, I believe in the middle of the, the second round, somewhere around there. Yes, sir. Yeah. <clears throat> I was, uh, the first fight of the night, which is, I enjoy because it, it's like one of those things where you get in, you get it out, you get over with, you can go, you know, go get your food, go anything you want to do. So, um, you know, the first fight of the night and, uh, I felt great. Um, just went in there. I, I, I knew that a lot of fighters, um, they see my wrestling 
and they think I can't strike because I wrestle. I'm just more comfortable wrestling. That's just because I've wrestled the majority of my life. So, um, so fighters just assume that I can't strike. I have good striking. I just, it's so hard not to take somebody down, you know, but, um, you know, I have a great, I have great coaches, great teammates, American top team. Um, my main coach, Steve Bruno, we do a lot of, we do a lot of striking drills where, um, you know, the, the, we drill so much that um, you can't help but to be comfortable on your feet. Um, just defense, offense, the way we drill, it's 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 very um, – the drilling is, is very um, – almost – it's like live almost, almost like live drilling, how you would in wrestling. Um, just almost like a, how a drill match would be um, is kind of how we drill striking. And uh, it's it's hard not to be prepared when you have the conditioning like that and also the – the confidence to uh defend strikes and return strikes right away so um all that together with my wrestling and everything you know i i was extremely confident going into the fight um and uh you know i got the job done i think i almost got him out of there i thought i thought the ref was gonna <laughs> stop it at one point um in the first round i got on him uh, i think he somehow reversed me and i got back on top and then towards the end of the round I thought the ref was going to stop it. And then right as the the last bell rang in the first round, I, I hit him pretty hard and stumbled him. And um, going into the second, you know, I, I knew that he was hurt. Um, just went back out there, put the pressure back on him, and uh, dropped him one more time in, in the uh, second round, jumped on him, and the ref stopped it. So it, it felt great to not only be the first fight of the night and get a finish, but also um, fortunately – um, UFC gives out what's called performance bonuses. So um, they give out for that night, they were giving out two performance bonuses for um, um, individual fighters who, you know, obviously performance bonus sent pretty self-explanatory for Phil. So they, they feel performed well. And uh, then they give out one fight of the night, fight of the night bonus. So the main event got fight of the night. Um, I got a performance bonus and another guy got a submission and he got a performance bonus. So, um, that helps a lot, uh, extra money, which, you know, extra money always helps, especially, um, we're, we're looking to buy a house down here and it's expensive down here. So, <laughs> yeah. so that definitely helps a lot. <laughs> yeah, I bet it does. So there was some conversation and chatter going on. I, I seen even on Twitter, there was some, some conversation with this, that they gave you a TKO instead of a KO. Obviously, you want to see the KO on your on your record, right? And I'm sure that matters a little bit more to the UFC um, and some and some monies and, and potential future contracts. What is the you know what is the line between the KO and the TKO? Because it you know for me, man, that guy was out. He you didn't need to jump on him. I think the ref was going to stop it, but but unfortunately, they they gave you a TKO instead of a KO. What's the uh, what's that fine line between those two? So it's it's essentially, I mean, when you think of like a KO and a TKO, the only difference really um, in the UFC eyes, it's a UFC's eyes, it's a finish. So they, it's not like they, you know, oh man, a KO over a TKO. You know, I I would much rather have been a knockout, the pure knockout. So the difference is a knockout. Obviously, the dude's out cold, like he he's out, like that's a knockout. TKO is pretty much you've hurt him really bad. The ref's job is to stop, you know, to stop any further damage from happening so um you know it, the feeling of knocking someone unconscious it it's, sounds pretty brutal but you know it's it's a fight um <laughs> that feeling is so like it's hard to explain it's it's like you see someone in front of you they're, they're up and moving and then boom they're then they're they're not moving you know it's almost like the way i can put it it sounds pretty morbid or pretty bad, but it's like killing somebody without killing somebody. You know, it's like putting the lights out and it's, it's crazy that feeling of what that feels like. Um, you know, that's what I wanted, but, um, you know, the ref stopped it before yeah. I could, I could finish him off, but <laughs> <Yeah>. you know, <laughs> I yeah. still won, you know, I'm happy with the win, happy with the performance bonus. So, um, next time though, I want to, I want to knock out. <laughs> Yeah, and that's uh, I, I will tell you that 
the people, if I'm, if I'm on your weight class, I'm taking notice one, because I know you're going to wrestle. You're going to be able to wrestle. If we're, if we get down on the mat, you know, you, you definitely have an upper hand there, but you connecting some strikes with that match and putting that guy out with a TKO, um, that's got to be on people's radar to say that takedown Tony may not be such such a bad wrestler after all. He might be able to strike as well. So that's got to be a uh, that's got to be a good feeling for you. Is that kind of um, that that kind of you know your I guess one sided um, fighting maybe obviously in some lower levels in that regional uh, competition and fights that you had you had some good strikes there as well and some TKOs and I think I've seen a KO or two on your on your record card there as well but the transition from your your previous training and gym uh, to American Top Team was that because you saw an opportunity there be, to become a better striker did that have anything to play into it did you did you did you know or have you thought about hey, I need to become a better striker. I need to get a little bit more well-balanced than just being a grappler and a wrestler and somebody that feels comfortable on the mat. Well, no, the last gym I was at was, was a, it was mostly a striking gym and had, had good striking, but the difference, like American Top Team is is um, the best gym in the world, Maz. You know, before I even moved down here, I always thought it was the best. So I'm, I'm not really biased because I'm here. I, uh, that's why I'm here because I, I know it's the best. And, and it's, and it's not anything against my old gym. It was just I, I needed the 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 training partners. I needed the hard push, and and you get a bunch of there's a lot of amazing coaches and athletes, and that accumulation of of all these different styles of of training partners and coaches together. Because mix, mixed martial arts is everything. It's MMA is is everything. So you know you might get somebody. Um, it's it's just putting yourself in an opportunity to learn from so many like so many different people that are all the best at what they do so to be the best me i need to be exposed to all those things i need to be pushed every day by partners that are better than me um coaches that you know know a lot and that you know know how to um you know make things stick to athletes and things like that so um it was more of a it was a not because you know i didn't think my gym was good or anything like that i just knew that at the level that i want to be i mm-hmm. I, I think about i want to be the best in the world i want to be ufc champion and i was thinking to myself I was like can i do that at this gym not anything against this gym or any of the training partners but am i going to be able to do that at this gym and, and i thought about it and you know the answer was no not because the gym wasn't good yeah. not because um, you know, my training partners weren't doing their best to help me, but because, um, you know, there's only but so much limit, like you're limited to what you have to work with at this one place. So I, I knew I had to move to become a better me. And there's so much to learn from, like so many different, like I said, the best in the world, like the best fighters in the world, especially around my weight, um, the smaller guys. Um, you name all the all the biggest promotions: UFC, Bellator, Ryzen, One Championship. They're all all those champions, all those top five ranked guys are all in my weight class, and I train with them every single day. So when you when you train with those guys every single day, when you go out into a fight, that may be the easiest round you get. The fight is going to be much easier. That fight was much easier. Every fight I've had is much easier than what I deal with every single day in, in this training room, in this, in, in the, um, in American top team. So, um, I just know that that adversity and that, that push that I get every single day that, you know, the rounds I lose, the rounds, the hard fought rounds that I barely win or don't win or whatever rounds, I know it's going to be great rounds and it's going to push me to be the best I can be. So when I go out there, it's no big deal. The fight is, you know, anything can happen in a fight, but I've prepared myself to the absolute best that I can. So when I go out there, um, you know, my, my chances of winning skyrocket. Yeah. Well, you definitely, you definitely did that on the 17th. That was a, uh, that was an impressive win. Tony, what do we have to look forward to? What's your, uh, what's your, how much is left in your contract? Do you have any fights left in this contract that are on schedule and, and kind of what the future holds outside of that? So usually the way like, um, especially like a contract coming from 
um, either contender series or usually if somebody gets signed, it's usually a four fight contract um, to start with. Um, I think that's like the the basic, you know, four fight deal. Um, I've got one more fight in my contract. And usually, how it works is the the way I can kind of describe the the four fight contract is almost like a feeling out process in a way. You know, um, mm-hmm. there have been people that have had four fight contracts. They lose the first two really bad, and they're like, "All right, we've seen enough." You know, mm-hmm. um, and they get rid of them. So, um, you know, I, I'm three fights in right now. I'm two and one on my contract, and um, you know, I, I'm, every day I think about, I'm not not every day, but every every fight, every day, you know, there, there's so many people that want to be where I'm at. So many fighters have dreams of being in the UFC. So um, at this level, you, it should, well, any, no one should ever feel this way, but you can never be too comfortable and be, um, you know, okay and complacent where you're at. I know that, um, you know, they, they can... I can be replaced if I'm not doing what I need to do, not being the best that I can be, being exciting, winning fights. So, um, you know, I do my best to to keep doing that. And uh, if I if I continue what I'm doing, then um, you know, as far as you know, sending a contract, I won't have any problems. I don't I don't think I have any problems um, getting re-signed and and uh, you know staying in the UFC for a long career. That's, I want to be here for the long haul. I want to be in the UFC. I want to be the champion. So, um, to do that, I got to keep winning, um, keep being exciting, keep getting finishes and, uh, hopefully get more bonuses because that helps. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, that's a, I just, I just take it one fight at a time. But as far as, um, a fight, like a schedule fight, I don't have one scheduled right now. Um, I'm doing some traveling at the end of May to go see my parents and, um, you know, once I get back, I'll be looking to, I would like to fight, uh, possibly into June, maybe July. Um, so, you know, I'll hopefully something happens pretty soon. I'd like to be more active this year. Last year I had two fights, which was the least I've had like ever, but in the UFC, you're not necessarily going to be as active as I was in my prior career. One, one year I had eight fights. Uh, in the UFC, you don't really get eight fights. You know, there's there's so many athletes to choose from. You know, like, yeah. so it's not because they don't want you, but there's so many athletes that have contracts, and you know they have to have a chance to fight too. So, um, but hopefully, I would like to get um, two, three more fights in for the end of the year, and uh, you know, hopefully, two, three more wins, and uh, keep keep building myself up. Nice. Maybe get you on a. Uh on a UFC prelim card or something in the near future. That would be uh that'd be nice to see you on one of those. Yeah. I'd like to be on a, I guess the goal is to be, you know, get on the main card and be like, uh, I will eventually, you know, I want to yeah. headline a card and then win the title, you know, but, uh, yeah. you know, my, other, my last three fights have been, uh, on the undercard, which is, which is fine. I mean, no big deal. You know, I understand that. Yeah. Um, I need to work my way up. So, you know, soon I'll be on the main card and I'll work my way on up. Just like, you know, the thing is, is when you start the regional level, that's how I started. I started first fight, you know, um, nobody really knew me and I worked my way up. And then I headline cards. I was the main event on a lot of fights. Um, you know, I worked my way up through promotions to win titles. And, you know, it's it's the same thing. So I've, ha- I've had practice with this and uh, I, I know what it's like and I know what it takes to, um, you know, keep being the best me, which is all I can do is be the best me. Yeah, for sure. If you're, uh, if you come out anything like you did in the last fight, I think you'll be successful and we'll see you on a UFC main card, uh, before too long. We'll have to pay to watch you, uh, <laughs> before too long for sure. Tony, Tony, um, you, you obviously have been there, done that. You've, you've kind of, uh, taken the lumps and you've, you've got a lot of great wins out there. Um, looking to do a couple more fights in the UFC this year. Uh, if if anybody out there is listening that that kind of is following your same track, uh, wrestling and whether it's high school or collegiate level now, and has aspirations to get into MMA, what's your uh, what's some best pieces of advice that you might have for for somebody looking to go that route? I'd say the main thing is just be a sponge, learn everything. Don't ever feel like you know everything, um, even if it's you know especially grappling like wrestlers easy wrestlers transition easy into into grappling but just know that 
You know, it, it's it may look easy. Some fights may look easy. You go out there, you see people knock people out, and you think, oh, you know, it's that easy. But it takes a lot of work. But a lot of wrestlers understand what 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 hard work is, and that's why wrestlers have more success. Another reason why wrestlers have more success, they understand hard work. They understand, um, you know, what it takes to be at peak physical in peak physical shape. And I, I would just say, um, know what you want and uh, continue to have fun too. That's the thing. Um, I think that's kind of why it fills it out in wrestling after a while. It was one of those things where you forget how to make it fun and it's no longer fun. So even though it's your job as a, you know, once you start fighting and stuff as an athlete, as a professional fighter, it's, it's technically your job. Keep it fun. Keep Keep finding ways to make it entertaining for yourself because if you dread going to practice you you know it's you won't have a long career so mm-hmm. um be a sponge um realize that you know it, it may take it, it could take a long time everybody's got it on a different journey so don't look at someone else's path and think oh well it took them two years so you know i'll be there in two years so you it may, may take you five years you know so um that's the thing and the most important thing um when uh, me and my dad talk this all the time. You see really good wrestlers, and then they knock people out, and they they don't want to wrestle anymore. They just want to knock people out. And uh, I, I can't stand to watch really good wrestlers completely neglect what got them to where they are. So, um, you know, if you start fighting and you start knocking people out, don't forget that you are, you can wrestle as well. So that's another thing that uh, – that just kind of irks me a little bit, especially when they start losing, they still never go back to wrestling, you know? So, um, yeah. there's a couple of things I can think of that, that, uh, that I think would be beneficial to someone that's, that's, it's kind of different paths. Well, different levels of when you're going through your career, but yeah. that's a, a couple of things I can think of as far as, um, you know, how to, how to, how to talk to and, and, uh, approach uh someone about their career and going to mma yeah for sure man and and definitely appreciate that it's uh great words of advice from somebody that's been there and now doing that and and definitely has a few uh a few t-shirts to uh, to prove it for sure tony man i can't thank you enough for the time that you've given us here at the grind and the two episodes that you've been on now But I'm going to ask you right now again, can we have another episode after your next fight? Because it's great to talk to you about the (laughs) fights and and to kind of get your perspective. Yes, sir. Anytime. It sounds good to me. Awesome, man. Well, definitely appreciate your time tonight, Tony. Best of luck and enjoy some time off with that family in May. We'll be looking forward to your return in the Octagon very soon. Thank you, sir. Yes, sir. We're actually next weekend. We're going, well, this coming up weekend, we're going to Disney World too, so. That'll be fun. Awesome, man. Yeah, I definitely enjoy Disney World. Hey, you, you get a you get a guy down on the mat with a strike and you're going to Disney World. I love <laughs> yeah, it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome, man. Well, definitely enjoy the time with the family. Have fun at Disney World and we look forward to uh to to keeping in touch with you and, and bringing you back on an episode real soon. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me back on. Yeah, man. Appreciate you. Thank you. Have a good one. You too. Man, I will tell you, there's nothing better uh, to talk to these young men and and see the continued success after their college careers. Um, Obviously, Tony making a hell of a run in the octagon and and doing it very well. If you don't follow Tony, if you haven't watched any of his fights, man, pull up the ESPN app, uh, punch in his name there, and go and, and watch some of his previous fights and watch the progression that this young man has made. I will tell you, it's pretty amazing to see uh, the the timeline that is out there of his fights in the MMA to his last fight. Tony's a a much different guy in that ring. Um, You can tell he's getting a lot more comfortable, and his strikes are getting very heavy. Uh, so if you're an MMA fan, go check him out. Tony's a, a great follow um, on his, I should have asked him to give his Twitter and his Instagram. I will I will definitely write that down so I remember next time. So, uh, But definitely check him out. If you got the UFC app, I think you can favorite him there and you can stay in touch and in contact with everything that's coming up with Tony. But if not, follow us. We will definitely follow his career and, and help get that information out there for you. So appreciate you tuning in. And as always, uh, go apps. Have a great evening.